Here's what you need to do to graph your data. Start by going to the uh, sixth grade Moodle. Scroll down to the fifth block on freshwater pollution and water quality. And let's have um, a couple of tabs. Actually, we're going to have four tabs open. So you're going to keep this one on the uh, Moodle here. I made a new tab to drive.google.com and have that one uh, logged into your G account. Password and uh, login information is on the board. And then we're going to look over on the fifth block of the Moodle under the How is Chimicum Creek doing uh, for netbooks? There's a link called Water Quality Data Sheet. I'm going to right click and go to open link in new tab and I'm going to do that for the one right under there water quality webs and data to 2002-2003 right click open link in new tab so now I've got a tab with sixth grade science water quality data 2012-2013 water quality data by drive okay so let's see what we got here this is where the data is for this year. I'm going to use period one dissolved oxygen because they've got some averages here that look really reasonable. Looking at this water quality one, 2012-2013 is blank. We're going to add those uh, as soon as we're all done. Those are going to be the averages for the year. Basically, it's going to go from here to here. C8 to K8. So we got to wait till we have um, J and K here to get the average for the whole year. Um, but if we... So don't do anything. But look at what else we have. We've got dissolved oxygen for 2011, 2012, 2010, 2011. We've got DO. This one, the averages are over here. 8.9. This one's right here, 2007-2008 for dissolved oxygen is right here, 2006-2007. We want the average, not just one class, but both classes or all three classes. And it goes back to 2002-2003, average for DO right there, because this one included kits and probes. Wow, so we got a lot of data going back years plus we have data for all these days this year we're gonna make one graph for each here's how you do that let's go to my drive and we're going to create a spreadsheet and as soon as it all loads and this is uh, for Mac and netbooks on the iPad pretty similar but I'll show you how that one's a little different. I'm going to click on Untitled Spreadsheet and put my name, Mr. G, DO, data. Put your name, what parameter you have, and uh, that it's your data. This is where we're going to do all the um, graphing. So first thing I need, need the dates. So what I'm going to copy is the dates from 5-3... I'm going to put dates and then DO in milligrams per liter. you got to put the unit of measurement so it works. This one's going to be 5-3, I mean 5 slash 3 slash 13. Then we had 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Five, six, thirteen, five, oops, seven, thirteen, five, eight, thirteen, five, nine, thirteen, five, ten, thirteen, then we had five, thirteen, thirteen. Right, I'm going to copy the numbers. Eight point six five, eight point six. 
8.57, I'm going to round off, 8.57, round it to the nearest hundredth, could have done it to the nearest tenth, 8.27, 8.27, it looks like it went up. 9.03. We had a 9.7 and a 9.5. Okay, so now I'm going to highlight what I did there. And I'm going to go to this icon right here insert chart. And this is where the chart editor, you're going to pick what kind of chart you want. I want just a line graph. And this pretty much shows you what's going on here. Wow, look at that. So there it is. It went down, then it went back up. And this goes from about 8 to 10. Um, and let's customize that because this is a little misleading. It looks like the chart almost went down to the very bottom. But that doesn't go to zero. So let's see, I've got the right type of line graph. Let's go to customize then. And let's give the chart a title. Very important that you remember tail. Title is the T in tail. A is for axes. Uh, I is for interval. And L is for labels. Let's start with title. Chimicum Creek DO. Now I'm going to put. 12, 13. The legend is really important, so we know we're measuring DO in milligrams per liter. The font is fine. This is where you can change the background color. Um, notice there's a scroll here. You, you really want to be able to scroll down so you can uh, do more things. Let's start with the horizontal axis. Horizontal axis it says right here, horizontal axis title. Those are the dates really important that we know what those are. We're going to do the left vertical. Now the left vertical, that one is dissolved oxygen in milligrams per liter or parts per million. We, they, they, it means the same thing. Now the minimum, I want it to go from 0 to 10. There. Now notice the line doesn't go way down and way up. It's not exaggerated. Uh, this data is more accurate, not misleading. Changing the interval really misleads the data. So let's see, we've got a title, T in uh, tail. The axes, we've got them correct. This one's the, it, it does this for you. This axis, the horizontal x-axis, is always time. And then what we uh, measured, the dissolved oxygen in milligrams per liter, goes here on the y or vertical axis. And labels, they're all labeled. We just labeled them. That's what we did right here where it says title. All right, let's make sure we got everything else. Um, we've got grid lines. You can add more grid lines. I think this is pretty good. You can even change the color of the grid lines. If you're going to change the colors in there, make sure that it doesn't hurt the eyes. You know, no reds on blues or green on red and, and those colors that are flashy on, on when they're digital. Um, you can change the thickness of the lines, but just make it so your graph looks good. And it's got to be a line graph. Don't be doing no bar graph for this. Now we're going to insert it. There is chart number one. Now, one of the things you can do with this chart is you can go up here and you can save it as an image. Well, guess what? Once you save it as an image to your computer, you know how to upload images. We've been practicing for weeks, months actually. And then you can put that on your blog. But this is the chart that you also want to um, draw for yourself to take to the youth summit. So there. So now we have one of the charts done. How do we do the other chart? Well, let's take and I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to make it go just to I instead of K. Let's pretend we've got an actual average. So our average for this year is 8.9. Here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to make a new graph, only this one's called year, and it's milligrams per liter because it's still dissolved oxygen. And I'm going to start with um, 2012-13. You could start with 2002, 2003. Depends on if you wanted to go back in time or forward in time. Then I'm going to do 2011, 2012, 2010, 11, 2009, oops, 2009 10. 2008-09, 2007 I mean, it's pretty cool that we got data going back this far. 07, 2005-06, 2004-05, 2003-04. Whoa, I made that the future. And then 2002 dash o three there this year eight point nine now we go to the water quality data sheet last year was eight point seven the year before that was eleven point six whoo good year for oxygen get the fish were happy uh, eight point nine hey look at that 8.9, just like this year. 2008 was 11.6. Huh, another good year. Then we've got 6.55. Whoa, big dip. Uh, 2006 was 7.74. 2005 was 10.58. It's rounding up. 2004, and you're going to do this obviously for your parameter. Don't do it for dissolved oxygen if you're pH or turbidity or something else. You guys are going to make your own graphs. I'm just showing you a DO so you know what uh, what we're doing. Whoa. Look at 2004, 13.1. 2003, 9.38. Remember, we're rounding to the nearest hundred. And 2002 was 7.51. Okay, well, guess what? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight just what I need. Remember, highlight it. Click on the Insert Chart button. And this one, of course, I'm going to make a line graph, just like before. We don't need a curvy line. These are nice because it shows peaks and valleys. It shows the data going way up and way down. If you do a curve, it looks like a sound wave or some kind of wave energy, and we don't need that. I'm going to go to Customize, and guess what? Got to add the chart title. Timicum Creek DO um, to 2002. Yeah, some title like that, something cool. And then the horizontal axis is uh, the year. Remember, this is the year, not the date. But the left one is the same thing. It's as the last graph we did. Dissolved oxygen in milligrams per liter and I do want to make the minimum zero the maximum eh, that's not bad I did it 16 and that's actually pretty good this shows a lot more change over the years than just this year this is pretty cool okay and that looks great I'm gonna insert that and um, once you got both your charts then it's just a mat you can see you can move them around um, you're going to save them as an image. Save image. And it's downloading it. So if you're on a netbook, it's going to download it into your download folder. If you're on a Mac, um, it's also putting it in your download folder. 
So if you look um, under, let's see, I've got my downloads right here. You should be able to find it in there. I'm going to move it out here. And I'm going to change the name to Mr. GDO2013. And then when I double click on it, I've got a PNG. Remember, that is a, a picture. So this is what I'm going to upload and fetch and put on my uh, blog. Yeah. It's really good looking. It looks great. And I'm going to do that with both of them. And that's it. Now let's see how to do it on the iPad. So we're going to go to the same place here. Freshwater pollution and water quality. Only this time we're going to need three tabs instead of four. Right under how's Chimicum Creek doing for netbooks. We've got water quality data sheet, which you can tap and hold open a new tab. And the same thing for the water quality webs and data 2002-203 open a new tab. So I've got this one and this one. And I can see everything I need here. Now one note, um, I mentioned about ammonia only going back a couple of years, but flow rate people, you're gonna find some a problem. It wasn't the same measurement every year. So this year, um, for flow rate, we're actually going to use gallons per minute instead of cubic meters per second. Last year, we recorded the cubic meters per second. I don't know, maybe this year you want to use that same one. Uh, the year before, cubic meters per second, so that works. Then we get to 2009-2010, um, it's recorded in cubic feet per second. Well, the big deal is you got to go to the average. 28.2 and then bring up the units app on the iPad and convert cubic feet per second to cubic meters per second. Very doable. Um, this year, the 2008-2009, uh, it was in meters per second. Okay, um, so you have to convert that to cubic and, and the way you do that is by multiplying it by 16 square meters, which is what we got for uh, the area of a cross section of the creek. May not be the same it was on that year, but at least it's comparable. And then we got feet per second on um, this year. So this is uh, way more complicated because now you have to convert 16 square meters to square feet and then multiply the 7.3 feet per second times square feet and then convert that to cubic meters per second. Yeah, flow rate people, you got your work cut out for you. It, it's doable. You just need to um, do the right math. Um, so good luck with that. Um, I'm sorry I'm not here to help you with that, but maybe if you do most of the work, I can help you finish when, when I get back. Okay, so. Um, I've got the same numbers here, the averages for DO, that I'm using as an example. But remember, if you're not DO, don't copy this. DO people, you can copy some of this, but remember, you also are going to have some extra numbers to put in that I'm not showing here. For this one was just done today, 514, and then 515 is going to be done tomorrow, which when you're looking at this, it was already done but you're gonna have a different number and then you're gonna have the average for all these days right here. Okay, use that for your yearly graph. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and type in NUM for numbers. We're gonna use the numbers app to graph. When the numbers app pops up, if it's on a graph, let's say it's on somebody's graph there, tap on spreadsheets to go back. That also saves it. So if you want to save yours, tap on spreadsheet, and then when you tap here, you can call it, you know, your first name and your parameter and that it's your graph. Um, and that's how you save it. So don't mess with other people's graphs. But to start a new one, just like most apps, there's a plus here. You tap that and you're going to go create a spreadsheet. 
Let's do a blank. We don't need any of this fancy stuff. That might actually even be more confusing. And we got to input our data. So we actually are going to start in the um, this kind of gray, it's grayish section. And we're going to put in the date first, the word date. That's our first um, title. And then the next one's going to be D O in milligrams per capital L liter. Okay, it kind of does that, don't worry about it. So we're going to put the dates in this light gray area. So 5 3, next. 5 6. And if you write them down on a piece of paper or something, it's easier because then you don't have to double tap and go back and forth between apps. You know, sometimes that old paper technology comes in quite handy. Don't know if we'll ever be rid of it. 5-9, or slash. I'm calling a slash a dash, and this is the one time where slashes are okay, because we're not saving it. Those slashes can be problematic when saving on the uh, lab quest. Okay, then I'm going to put in my numbers. 8.65, and this has a next going that way, the arrow's pointing that way, and a next going down like a, um, a return. I'm going to do this next, so it just goes down one. It'll be quicker for me to type this way. 8.57, oops, nope, that was supposed to be 8.6. This one's supposed to be 8.57, 8.27, 9.03, and 9.7. Uh, oops. I skipped one. So I'm going to put a 9.5 there. So, yeah, DO people, don't copy me. I, I must have skipped something somewhere. All right, then I'll do done. So let's pretend this is the actual data I have. I'm going to then select, just like I did on um, Google Docs, Google Spreadsheet. I have to select my data. This is my data table. And what pops up is cut, copy, paste, delete, fill, create chart. Well, guess what? I'm going to create a chart. And you can pick a different color chart here. We want two-dimensional. I know three-dimensional sounds cool, but let's stick to the facts here. Pick the color you want. Pick the type of chart. And look at what we've got here. I'm going to move this over. We've got the beginnings of a beautiful graph. But first, I need to add some stuff. I'm gonna tap here so I can get the title. Chimicum Creek D.O. Alright. And you notice when we're checking for tail, I just did my title, the intervals this way I might need to fix. Um, the axes it does for me so I don't really have to worry about that but the L and tail is I have to label the axes. Um, so here's where you do that. See this little paintbrush right here. It's got chart options. So you can choose if you want to have a border and a legend. I always recommend, you know, having a legend. It's really helpful. Um, you can change the text size, the chart, font, value labels. Um, I don't want to put those because when you put them, it puts the numbers right here. If you like that and it looks good, do it. But, um, I'm going to turn them off because they kind of get in my way. So that was the chart options. Then I'm going to go to x-axis. I'm going to put in major grid lines because then it's easier for me to see what date goes to which one. And I do need a title. There, so it added category axis. And then I can go in and type it. Same thing for this one. I got major grid lines and I'm going to put in a title. There's that. Now for value scale, um, I'm going to put in the maximum, well, I'm going to put in the minimum value of zero. That uh, makes it really cool. And the maximum value, 10, I'm going to make it just a little more than 10, 11, because that is going to be most helpful. And then I want to change this. Now watch what happens. See how it goes from zero, jumps to 2.75, then to 5. I don't like that. 
So if I increase this, ooh, look, it went from 0 to 2.2. .2. That's still getting there. Actually, those are looking worse and worse. Let's see if we can't do 10 there. It goes, well, it's not perfect. I wanted it to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It goes 1.1, 2.2. Maybe I can change this for the minor steps. No. Well, you can play around with these numbers till you get a um, interval that you like. It's got to be an interval that people can see what numbers you have here. Yeah, I'm thinking the 10 is the best one. Eh. It works. Works for me. And I'm gonna I'm gonna move. You can actually move your um. What's it called? Your your. We can get at that legend. There we go. So I grabbed it, and I can move it over here. And it's a little bit too long. Ugh, to make my chart way too big. But see the two little green ends there. I move those, and that allows me to resize my legend. For some reason. Legends look pretty good over there where you can see them right above Chimicum Creek. It was hard to see. Okay. Then I got to go to the... the uh, this axis here. And call that Dissolved... Oxygen. And remember, you're going to write whatever your parameter is. And you have to write the unit. By now you should have read your information and you should know the units that you measured. Now pH is the only one that doesn't have a unit, it's just measured in pH. The unit is logarithmic so it's kind of weird I think. And then this one is the dates and you're going to do years for the other one. Dates. Alright, so check it out. I now have a beautiful graph. And if I go back spreadsheets, I can work on it the next day if I didn't finish it. I can title it. Please title it. Mr. G D O and done. There. So I come back the next day. I finish it if I if I need to do something else. Um, but now I want a copy of that so I can put on my blog. So what I do is I'm going to take a screenshot. And then, I've got this other great app, PS Express. PS Express will allow you to edit and crop. And those of you who did your comic book and didn't export it, and you were taking screenshots, this is what you should have done. It was easier to export, but this will work. Um, we're going to find the chart. See? Look at that there. Would be perfect if I didn't have all that stuff around it. So I, I tapped on Edit. And then right here, this little guy right here, um, gives me some choices. One of the choices is crop. I want to choose crop. And I'm going to move these guides here just so that my graph is showing, showing and not all this other stuff. There's a check over here. I'm going to check that by tapping on it. Once it looks like what I want, I save, and voila, I now have that excellent chart um, saved to my photo album, which I can use FTP View to upload to the FTP account, like you guys have been practicing, to put on your blog. And that's it. That's how you do it with an iPad. All right, get her done, people.